Everybody enjoy that breakfast? I know I did. That was delicious. So, <laughs> you all had a chance to meet and greet and get some food in India, so you should be all set and ready for an interesting day with colorful speakers and lots of things to learn. I want to start off by asking this question. Is there anybody in here who is not going to go to the protest? Is, is there anybody in here who is not going to protest on April 4th? There is an acceptable excuse for not going. It's <laughs> called your own funeral. Ah, good one. Other than that, now the reason why I say that, I have been told to keep using it. Oh, look, it works again. Okay, good. Anyway, well, with eight kids, having, them, the having one of these is not necessarily... It's in your local community. Uh, the question was, where is the protest? What is it? What? Okay, well, let me bring you up to speed. Uh, on April 4th, there's going to be a protest in towns all across Ontario. And it's about hydro, specifically about hydro. Okay, there the probably short and corny. Okay, well, that's all right. I get it. That's okay. Keep your hand on the bottom of it. Okay. Usually they tell me that when I'm drinking. Keep your hand on the bottom of it. Anyway, uh, so this, this protest is province wide in your local community. If you don't have one in your local community, just go to the one nearest you. Um, I will be speaking in Eganville that day on uh, at 1.30 in Eganville, so anybody from up the line, uh, if, you want to, if you don't have one in your area, there's one in Renfrew, there's one in Barry's Bay, I believe there's one in Pembroke, so for those out that way, there's certainly going to be a uh, protest there, and I know there's protests scattered around here as well. So just get a hold of Beth or, or uh, Shirley, I'm sure could help you with that. Uh, talk about where the protests are. These are designed to tell the government they have to scrap the Green Energy Act. This thing is the biggest disaster to strike Ontario. I've been doing radio since 2000, since the year 2000, and I have never seen any issue make people as deeply angry and fearful as this issue has. Now, the one thing I want to uh, impart in the few moments I have to speak with you this morning before we let all the important speakers up here is that this is going to take more than just one particular event. If you're under the illusion, and I think I'm preaching to the choir, but if you're under the illusion that this one event on April the 4th is going to be the thing to turn the trick, uh-uh. This is D-Day. On D-Day, June 6, 1944, that's when they started to liberate uh, Europe. They did the, the war wasn't over then. It was just getting started. We needed to adopt that attitude for ourselves as well. This is where it starts. This is where we have to start planning for what happens next. What's our next move? Because we'll have every month, every time somebody opens their hydro bill, more gasoline on that fire. So we need to harness that energy and the anger and the frustration and the fear that's out there because there's people out there now paying more for their energy use than they are for their mortgage. And that, I'm sorry, is just not acceptable. So the, what has to happen is go by all means. If you can at all, you know, like I said, the acceptable excuse is your own funeral. So go to your local rally. Be there. Be part of it. Make sure your voice gets heard. But also keep in the back of your mind that this is the beginning, not the end. This will not be finished until the Green Energy Act is scrapped. We stop putting up wind, wind uh, I call them bird churners, wind turbines. We stop pulling up, putting up solar panels. We stop selling power over the border for less than what we make it. And yet we end up paying full market fare for it. You know, it's like having a farm and not availing yourself of the product produce of that farm and selling it for you, to your neighbor for less than what you cost you to grow it. It's the same kind of mentality. So that's got to stop. So when we can accomplish those things, then, at least on this front, the war is over. But the op opposition that we face, they do not know the word defeat. They do not understand that just because they lose a battle, they, they've lost the war. They are not the kind of people who they think long term. They've got plans for 20, 30 years out. So we have to defeat them here. We have to defeat them in the ballot box. We have to defeat them in the education system. At every possible battleground, every time we cross swords with those people, 
we have to be willing to fight longer, harder, and with more tenacity than anything they can muster if we ever hope to turn this around on a large scale and get back the country we've lost. So that's what I want to leave with you there, Aaron. All right, so I'm going to keep it. I can't really talk in more than five to seven minute bursts anyway without feeling like saying I got to take a break and we'll be right back after this. Um, our next speaker, uh, the first speaker of the morning, is a very interesting individual has a very interesting past and has fought the fight on many different fronts over the last, well, it's got to be 10, 15 years by now, I'm sure. And of course, I'm speaking of Howard Galganoff. And he has been fighting the fight in Quebec. He's moved over here. He continues the fight now. And uh, Howard, this is your cue. You need to get up and head up. Well, get up here. <laughs> I don't want to turn the mic over to you. But Howard Galganoff is a long-time friend of the meeting going with fairness and he's certainly someone who isn't afraid to call a spade a spade. And we need more of that kind of an attitude in amongst the general population. Because if everybody had that attitude, we never would, be, we never would have gotten into this mess in the first place. So Howard.